In today's video, I will teach you how to pay zero taxes legally on a lot of money. So this video is not for billionaires. It's not for the uber wealthy. This is for the 99% of people out there. I want to give you the tax loopholes, 10 legitimate ways to pay zero taxes. So starting off with number one, we have section 1202 gain exclusion. You can make up to $10 million tax free on small business stock. So if you invest in stocks, then you have to know about this. If you're a small business owner, then you need to know about this as well. So here's how this works if you're an investor. So step number one is that you invest in the stock of a qualifying small business. Step number two is that you hold on to your investment for at least five years. And then step number three is that when you sell the stock, then up to $10 million a gain will be tax free. Now, here's how it works if you're a small business owner. Two steps. The first step is that you structure your business as a qualifying C corporation or LLC. Step number two, you sell your business after five years and then your gain on the sale is 100% tax free up to $10 million. In both cases, whether you're selling your stock or whether you're selling your business, you do not need to invest a minimum amount of money you do not need to do any kind of fancy offshoring activities. I've done this gain exclusion multiple times for clients. They started or invested very little money in a qualifying small business. The company grew rapidly and then they sold it for millions of dollars of gain and it was 100% tax free. And just a heads up, a lot of business owners and investors already qualify for $10 million tax free and they don't even realize it. So for more details, please look into US code section 1202. Moving on to number two is the primary residence exclusion. If you own a home, then this is for you. If you plan on buying a home, please keep this in mind. So you can pay zero taxes on $250,000 of profits from the sale of your home. And it's $500,000 of profits tax free if you're married filing jointly. So here's how this works. From the day that you sell your home, you look back five years. Did you live in that home as your primary residence for at least 24 months, which is two years? If you did, then you qualify for the full $250,000 tax-free exclusion if you're single and $500,000 if you're married filing jointly. And let me get more specific with you. Your two-year qualifying period does not have to be consecutive. So here's an example. You sold your home, you look back five years, right? Let's say that you lived in that home for 12 months. You moved out and rented it out for two years. You came back and lived in it for six months. You moved out and you rented it out for a year. And then you came back and you lived in it for six more months. In this example, you lived in that home as your primary residence for two years in the past five years and you qualify. Now, let me show you how the gain exclusion works. So let's say that you're single. So you can exclude up to $250,000 of profit on the sale of your home. So you bought your home for $400,000 and you lived in it for at least two years. And then you sell the home for $700,000. That means that you made a profit of $300,000. $250,000 of that $300,000 will be tax free. So you will pay taxes on the remaining $50,000 of gain. Number three, long-term capital gains tax of 0%. If you invest in the stock market or crypto, you must know this. We're talking about 100% tax-free capital gains. So let me clarify this for you. If you buy a stock or crypto and hold it for longer than one year and then you sell it for a gain, it will be 100% tax free if you're single and you make about $60,000 a year or less, head of household and you make about $80,000 a year or less, married filing jointly and make about $120,000 a year combined or less. So keep in mind that these income thresholds include the standard deduction and these are adjusted for inflation each year. So if you're in this income range, then you should prioritize long-term capital gains over short-term capital gains so that your gains will be 100% tax-free. And if you normally make more money than this, 
then just keep this in the back of your mind because if you have a year where you make less money and you're in this income range, then this would be a good year to sell and lock in your long-term capital gains tax-free. Let me give you an example to clarify this. So let's say that you're married filing jointly. The 0% tax rate applies to people making approximately $120,000 a year. And let's say that your combined income is $80,000 a year. Now, if you sell your stock for a $50,000 long-term capital gain, congratulations. This will increase your total income for the year from $80,000 to $130,000. So 40,000 of those long-term capital gains will be tax-free and the additional $10,000 of long-term capital gains will be taxed. So please note that your long-term capital gains will be tax-free for your federal income taxes with the IRS. This is not applicable to your state income taxes. However, some states do not charge state income taxes. So in that case, if, if there's no state income tax, then you would literally pay zero taxes. So please be aware of this. Tell your friends, tell your family members, spread the word. Number four, Roth retirement accounts. Any money that you make within a Roth 401k or a Roth IRA will be 100% tax free. So Peter Thiel, a co-founder of PayPal, started his Roth IRA with $2,000 and did not put any additional money into it after that. About 20 years later, it increased in value to $5 billion and that's 100% tax free for him. So listen, you don't have to shoot for a billion dollars, but this is proof that you can make a lot of money and pay zero taxes with a Roth retirement account. Number five, depreciation from rental properties. So this one is the oldest trick in the scroll. So here's how this works. I'm gonna give you an example. So let's just say that you buy a car, you drive it for thousands of miles and there's normal wear and tear and it depreciates in value. So we all know this. Now, when it comes to taxes, depreciation is an expense and you receive a tax write-off. So here's the funny thing with real estate. If you buy a property, then you know that generally it goes up in value over time, right? But according to the tax rules, properties depreciate in value and you get a tax write-off. So this is why billionaires get into commercial real estate because of the massive depreciation tax write-offs. But for non-billionaires, you can do the same thing with rental properties. Okay, so here's the thing. You can use depreciation expense as a tax write-off. However, there is a limit on how much that you can write off. But if you accumulate enough rental properties, then you can classify yourself as a real estate professional. And then that limitation goes away. Classifying yourself as a real estate professional on your tax return is easy. You just check off a box that says that you're a real estate professional. They take your word for it. But obviously you need to be able to back it up if you ever get audited, but that's the worst case scenario. Number six, losses from your side hustle. So if you lose money doing a side hustle, you can use those losses as a tax write-off and reduce your taxes. So let's just say that you're working a regular nine to five job but you wanna try out a new business venture. You come up with this brilliant idea to start your own YouTube channel. And you buy all this stuff to become an awesome YouTuber. You buy camera equipment, lights, a computer, supplies, etc. You spend $2,000. And then you just give up. Like being a YouTuber is lame, it's just not for you. In that case, you can use that $2,000 loss as a tax write-off. If you blew $20,000, then you can write off $20,000 as long as you legitimately tried and it's not a sham. Number seven, eliminates social security and Medicare taxes. I am a big fan of this one because I am not that optimistic about the future of our social security system. So this is only gonna work if you're self-employed. An S corporation is not subject to social security and Medicare taxes. If you are self-employed, do yourself a favor and look into an S-Corp. It's easy to form an S-Corporation. If you're an LLC, C-Corporation, a partnership, it's easy to switch to an S-Corporation. So I have videos on how to do it for free.
Number eight is an HSA, health savings account. So an HSA is a tax advantage account where your money grows tax free. If you use the money for qualified medical expenses, then you will not pay any taxes on the money that you make within the HSA. So I have a health savings account. Fortunately, I currently have no health issues, but I put money into my HSA every year and I let it grow tax free because if I develop health problems in the future, I will have this tax free money built up to help me with my bills. Number nine is a 529 plan. The college is expensive and it's just gonna get worse. I would recommend that you look into a 529 plan. A 529 plan is like a retirement plan that is designed for future education expenses. So most people set up a 529 plan for their children, but it doesn't have to be for your child. It could be for your grandchild, your nephew, your sister. It could be for yourself. So here's how it works. You put money into a 529 plan. You decide how to invest that money in the plan and it grows tax free and you will never pay any taxes on that money. If the money is used for qualified education expenses like college tuition. And if you start your 529 plan early for your child and you let it grow tax free for 10 years, 15 years, 18 years, then I'm sure that it's going to become very substantial. Number 10 states with zero income tax. So you can always relocate to a state that has zero income tax. The state income taxes in California and New York can be higher than 10%. And New York City even has a locality tax on top. So that's just too much in my opinion, especially when you're paying federal income taxes, social security taxes, Medicare taxes, you pay sales taxes and all the additional taxes on your utilities, your cell phone, gasoline taxes, etc. Currently, there are nine states that do not charge a state income tax. I'm going to list them off. Shout out to everyone in these states. Alaska, Florida, Nevada, New Hampshire, South Dakota, Tennessee, Texas, Washington, and Wyoming. So those are 10 ways that you can pay zero taxes on a lot of money. If you have any questions, please let me know in the comments down below. Please subscribe. I thank you for the support and I wish you a very nice day. Take care.